Solving the heat or diffusion equation u sub t equal duxx. This video is part two, using the initial condition to find the arbitrary constants. To see how to find the general solution, refer to part one. Okay, so let's assume that we're given some initial condition u of x at the time zero is equal to some function f of x, but this function is only specified on the interval zero to three. So physically, we can think of this as being either the temperature of a rod that extends from x equals 0 to x equals 3, or we could think of it as the concentration of some solute in a pipe, and the pipe goes from x equals 0 to x equals 3. So that might look like something like this, for example. So here we have a peak in either the temperature or in the concentration. So what we want to do is we want to specify these bn values using this initial condition. So we plug in t equals 0 up here, and that gives us an expression u of x comma 0 equal the infinite sum of bn multiplied by sine n pi x over 3, and that we want to be equal to f of x. Now this looks a lot like a Fourier series. And in fact, I've written a general form of a Fourier series for some function g of x. Here, g of x has period p in general, and it always consists of a sum of a constant, some cosine terms, and some sine terms. Now, for any given function, we may find that some of these coefficients are zero, and in our case, what we see is that all of the cosine terms seem to have zero coefficients, and the c term is also zero. Another thing that we notice is that um, if you match the quantity in brackets here, n pi x over 3, with 2 n pi x over p, uh, we can see that we have to have 2 over p has to be equal to 1 over 3, so the period is 6. So if we're going to interpret this as some kind of a Fourier series of f, it, we need to be operating with a function with period 3. Now, we only have a function defined from 0 to 3. That means that we're going to have to somehow extend our function down to minus 3. Now, why would we uh, choose any one form of the function over here over another? Um, you know, that's where the other important piece of this expression comes in. There are no cosine terms in this expression. So what kind of a function can we write down here that would ensure all the cosine terms and the constant term would disappear? Well, if we extended this as an odd function of x, like this, then when we calculate the a n values, and those would be given by 2 over p, which is 1 over 3, and here the integral is usually done from minus 3 to 3, although it could be over any period of the function g of x. So the function g of x that we've just defined as an extension of f is going to be an odd function. And the cosine functions here, these ones are all even functions. When I take the product of an odd and an even function, I get an odd function. Sorry. Uh, yes, I get an odd function. And integrated over a symmetric interval about the origin, this will come out to be 0. So by extending all the way to minus 3, I get the correct period, 6. And by extending it as an odd function, I ensure that the Fourier series of this extended function will have no cosine terms and no constant term as well. The same argument, this is odd, and that therefore comes out to zero. Uh, so the other um, important feature is that we need to be able to calculate these bn values. So in this case, this 2 over p will be replaced by a 1 over 3, and the integral will go from minus 3 to 3. But now we have an odd function multiplied by an odd function, and the, pro the product of two odds will give us an even function. And the integral of an even function across a symmetric interval, we can save a little bit of effort. We can write this as 1 over 3 integral from only half the interval and double it. So I'll put a 2 up there. And then I can put in, well, instead of putting g of x here, I don't need to extend my function anymore once I've taken advantage of the symmetry of the extension I would have used. And so I extend it, but then for the formula, I can actually just use the original function defined between 0 and 3. So now 
I have a simpler formula for the coefficients on the sine functions. And so we can calculate these Vn's and then figure out what this Fourier series representation of the function needs to be. Okay, so on the next page, we just I just give uh, that in you know written out in full, and that is that we want to extend the function f one so that it's e equal to uh, f on zero to three. We also want the Fourier series for this extension to have zero coefficients c and a n, and we want the extended function to have period six. So we managed to do all of that as I described previously, and this is just another illustration of those extensions. Okay, so now we have a Fourier series for the extended function with a simplified expression for the uh, integral for calculating the bn's, and we can take the bn's that we calculate using this simplified expression and put them into this summation notation with our exponential multiplied by the eigenfunctions sine n pi x over 3. Okay, so that takes care of the Dirichlet case. Now the Neumann case, if we had been given Neumann boundary conditions, Everything through here would have been very similar, except we want to keep the cosine terms instead of the sine terms. And so when we extend our function here, instead of extending it as an odd function, we'd extend it as even, but the rest of it all follows through in an analogous way. So the last thing that we need to talk about is how to solve non-homogeneous boundary conditions.